Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents. Here are three stories from the book Yoruba Legends by M. I. Ogumithu. In the first story, you will learn how the kingdom of the Yorubas in modern day Nigeria came to be. In the second, you will learn how two scars on arms came to be seen as desirable. And in the third story, you will hear of the famous hunter Akiti and how he defeated an elephant with the power of a fly. Okay, let's begin. The Kingdom of the Yorubas The ancient king, Odudua, had a great many grandchildren, and on his death he divided among them all his possessions. But his youngest grandson, Oranyan, was all that time away hunting, and when he returned he learned that his brothers and cousins had inherited the old king's money, cattle, beads, native cloths, and crowns, but that to himself nothing was left but twenty-one pieces of iron, a cock, and some soil tied up in a rag. At that time the whole earth was covered with water, on the surface of which the people lived. The resourceful Oranyan spread upon the water his pieces of iron, and upon the iron he placed a scrap of cloth, and upon the cloth the soil, and on the soil the cock. The cock scratched with his feet and scattered the soil far and wide, so that the ocean was partly filled up and islands appeared everywhere. The pieces of iron became the mineral wealth hidden under the ground. Now Oranyan's brothers and cousins all desired to live on the land, and Oranyan allowed them to do so on payment of tribute. He thus became the king of all the Yorubas, and was rich and prosperous through his grandfather's inheritance. Story number two. How tribal marks came to be used. A certain king named Sango sent two slaves to a distant country on an important mission. In due course they returned, and he found that one slave had achieved successfully what he had been sent to do, while the other had accomplished nothing. The king therefore rewarded the first with high honors, and commanded the second to receive 122 razor cuts all over his body. This was a severe punishment, but when the scars healed, they gave to the slave a very remarkable appearance, which greatly took the fancy of the king's wives. Sango therefore decided that the cuts should in future be given not as a punishment, but as a sign of royalty, and he placed himself at once in the hands of the markers. However, he could only bear two cuts, and so from that day two cuts on the arm have been the sign of royalty, and various other cuts came to be the marks of different tribes. And story number three, Akiti the Hunter. A famous hunter and wrestler named Akiti boasted that he was stronger than any other man or animal. He had easily overcome a giant, a leopard, a lion, a wolf, and a boa constrictor, and as nobody else opposed his claim, he called himself the King of the Forest. Wherever he went, he sang his triumphant wrestling song, and everyone feared and respected him. But he had forgotten the elephant, who was a very wise animal and knows many charms. One day the elephant challenged him and declared that he had no right to call himself king, as the elephant himself was the monarch of the forest and could not be defeated. Akiti thereupon flung his spear at his enemy, but because of the elephant's charm the weapon glanced off his hide and did him no harm. Akiti next tried his bow and poisoned arrows and his hunting knife, but still without effect. However, the hunter also possessed a charm, and by using it, he changed himself into a lion and flew at the elephant, but the elephant flung him off. Next he became a serpent, but he could not succeed in crushing the elephant to death. At last he changed himself into a fly and flew into the elephant's large flapping ear. 
he went right down inside until he came to the heart. And then he changed himself into a man again and cut up the heart with his hunting knife. At last the elephant fell dead, and Akiti stepped out of his body in triumph, for he was now without question the king of the forest. The End The first story really had a wonderful way of explaining how the world came to be. I liked that story a lot. The second one made me smile when the king could only handle two cuts. I was like, oh, I'm going to be a big, strong I'm going to have all these. And then, oh, two cuts. Okay, I'm done. Honestly, he seemed a little bit like a poser. And the third story was pretty wild. I wasn't expecting the elephant to die, but it makes sense within the story. Today's podcast shout out is to the Beard Al podcast. That's beer apostrophe D Al podcast. Lauren and John are siblings who love beer and the music of the legendary Weird Al. They talk about other things as well, but both beer and Weird Al hold special places for me. He was one of the first concerts that I went to, and I think it was the first one I paid for. And if you like their podcast as much as I do, go and give them a five-star rating on iTunes or Podchaser. And the listener shout-out is to Louisville, Kentucky, Several Native American tribes, including the Osage and Cherokee and Hopewell, have called the area home, along with three-quarters of a million people that currently reside there. Probably best known for hosting the Kentucky Derby, it is also home to one-third of all bourbon production. You're also 84% of my listeners from Kentucky. So thank you, and good night. <laughs>